the Active Towns podcast, conversations about creating a culture of activity. I'm John Simmerman, founder of the Active Towns Initiative and your host on this podcast journey. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's always wonderful to have you along for the ride. In this episode, you'll meet the amazing bicycle advocacy volunteer and photographer, Frank Peters of Santa Barbara. We talk about the recent transformation of State Street into a car-free zone to give more space to people to walk, bike, shop, and dine in the city's core downtown business district. And he has graciously shared with us some of his beautiful photography work documenting this historic period in time. But before we dive into this discussion, please allow me a moment to mention that this episode is once again being brought to you by the super generous contributions of our donors, sponsors, and monthly patrons on our Patreon page. Thank you all so very much for your amazing support. As is frequently the case in most small nonprofits, please know that any donation is greatly appreciated and every little bit adds up. To learn how you too can make a huge difference in helping me to produce this content by making a tax deductible gift, becoming a corporate sponsor, or joining our monthly Patreon program, please head over to our website at activetowns, that's plural, .org, and simply click on the donate link in the top right corner of the page. As always, I've included all the appropriate access links in the show notes. One last thing before we get started. If you're enjoying the Active Towns podcast, please subscribe to and rate it on your preferred podcatcher platform, including our new YouTube channel. Okay, time to roll into this fabulous conversation with Frank Peters. Frank, it's so wonderful to connect with you. Welcome to the Active Towns podcast. Thanks a lot, John. To kick things off, why don't you take a little bit of time to share with our audience uh, just a little bit about yourself. So a very brief moment to uh, introduce yourself to the audience. Sure. Well, I'm a longtime retired guy. I started out, uh, you know, just career-wise anyway, I wrote software for Wall Street decades ago. And uh, ooh, that was uh, exciting and thrilling. And uh, uh, I retired at age 45. And since that time, I've never punched a clock again. And so I've dedicated my life since that time to uh, um, all volunteer efforts. I've sat on nine different nonprofit boards uh, over these many years. and. Uh, and most recently, in the past 10 years, I've uh, turned myself into a bicycle advocate. And uh, I think that's what we're, that's why I'm on your show today. Yeah. And I, I, gosh, if memory serves me correctly, I think it must have been 2012 when we first met. It, it, and if that sounds correct, I, I'm, if I'm jogging my memory, uh, perhaps the Alliance for Walking and Biking Retreat on the Queen Mary, or perhaps oh, I was the Pro Walk. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I that's whatever. Both. Yeah. 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 And so, weren't you one of the presenters? I uh, I was in a breakout session on the Queen Mary. I got forty five minutes notice that I was going to host a breakout session for forty five minutes, and. Uh, So that was good. I I usually don't need a lot of time to uh, just hand me the microphone, I usually say, and watch out. So you, you, you know, are currently in Santa Barbara. You were previously in in Orange County, but you had a little interim up in the Portland area. Talk a little bit about that. I had family that was moving from the Bay Area, my sister and her husband, moving to Portland. I went to University of Oregon one year, just one year on exchange from University of Massachusetts. So I had a real, you know, soft spot for Oregon. And so we packed up and sold the house and moved to Portland where, wow, what a, you know, uh, your listeners know it's a platinum level bicycle friendly community and super infrastructure, uh, great Uh, community support, nonprofits supporting all of that. 
uh, effort up there. Yeah, it was uh, a great place to go hang out for a couple of years. Fantastic. And then after that, you landed in Santa Barbara. And I would say pretty much immediately when you hit the ground in Santa Barbara, you got engaged with the bike bicycle advocacy uh, environment there in town. I paid you a visit a few years ago mm -hmm. and you took me around and introduced me to some some wonderful folks, including uh, a community cycles type of uh, program there and uh, just great stuff. Bring us up to speed with, uh, you know, that environment of the the efforts to make Santa Barbara even more bicycle friendly. Sure, John. Uh, it was like a punch in the nose to move from uh, Portland to Santa Barbara. I mean, uh, yes, it had some good bones, you'd say, right, in the uh, infrastructure here, but a lot of room for improvement. And uh, I, I knew that if I didn't engage in a constructive way, I'd just become a troublemaker. So I muscled my way into the bike coalition here. One of the things that is instantly, you know, observable to me as I moved to Santa Barbara uh, four years ago was uh, State Street is the main you know, downtown street. It goes right through the heart of the retail. Uh, you know, coming from Portland had several, you know, uh, neighborhoods with great economic vitality. But in Santa Barbara, there's just State Street. And the city has done a lot. There's no parking on State Street. It's just a single lane in each direction and bike lane on each side, which is great. But, you know, that's <clears throat> still, uh, since cars can't, you know, stop or park, why do we even have them there? So when we bring this up, though, the would get patted on the head, right? Just like I was saying in Newport Beach and so many other places, right? Well, that's a nice idea, Frank. Uh, you're such an original thinker, but we've been talking about that for 30 years. Well, uh, nothing ever came of it. However, the economic crisis that occurs to our restaurants in particular here in Santa Barbara, uh, that that's what motivates the city. They allow the rent, they one, they close down State Street nine blocks from the Arlington Theater all the way down to, let's say, the freeway. Uh, that's the core of the downtown area. So now bicyclists and skateboarders and pedestrians can roam, you know, without concern about uh, vehicles. And what happens the next day is restaurants start expanding. You know, they have to, all dining has to move outside. They're moving out onto the sidewalk and then out into the street, building little uh, wooden platforms in some cases and setting up all their, you know, tables and chairs outside. Well, what happens is, uh, you know, maybe California is, doing a little bit better than average with dealing with the coronavirus and dining outside has been deemed, you know, reasonably safe. And the fact that Santa Barbara is a major tourist destination, the restaurants in Santa Barbara go from teetering on the brink of extinction to overwhelming, you know, financial success. These restaurants are packed night well especially weekend nights starting tonight thursday night friday night saturday night sunday night wow so it's been a uh, huge success uh closing state street cars and uh, uh, and then of course why we're here talking about it is bicycle ridership is way up it's uh something that uh, many of us have never seen before the uh, number of people on bicycles so I noticed out on your social media feeds, uh, maybe it was weeks ago, you can you know, correct me as to when you really you know, felt compelled to grab your, your camera and, and get out there and start you know, snapping some, some images. And, and oh, by the way, I love the fact that the marquee of, uh, you, know, you had your, 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 your Instagram identity up on the marquee of, what theater was that? That's the Arlington Theater, which bookends, you know, one of the bookends of the State Street closure. Wow. And it's one of the most iconic, you know, 
places in the city. And uh, <clears throat> it's my neighbor. I live right next door. And I know the folks at the Arlington. And, you know, you feel terrible that they can't, uh, you know, they're not allowed to show movies or have any concerts or anything like that. And, uh, you know, I started brainstorming, uh, you know, talking to myself in the mirror, you know, how could I uh, promote what I'm doing, capturing these images on Instagram? Uh, and, uh, you know, just create a little bit more buzz. I'd like, of course, city officials to see, you know, firsthand uh, the renaissance in bicycling in Santa Barbara. So the theaters are closed. I can't go inside and show them on the big screen, but the marquee was sitting there virtually empty. And I negotiated with my friends next door. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure you've got a picture you'll put up, John, is... Uh, I have uh, biking breathing on Instagram featured on the marquee and what a, you know, it's caused uh, me uh, great uh, enjoyment and uh, really tickles and kind of validates me too. Pe a lot of people in the community see me pointing a camera at them and what's their first reaction is, you know, am I doing something wrong or, you know. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? That old guy too. So now I can say, uh, you know, have you seen the marquee on the Arlington today? So that's been fun, a, a non-digital marketing. Yeah, approach. yeah. And it's wonderful. And we're we're going to share as part of this particular video podcast. And so this is another uh, encouragement for those of you listening to the audio version of this. Be sure to head over to YouTube and, and, and catch some of the visuals to this. Tell me a little bit about the that experience and and the 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 response that you're getting from the people who are out there because there's joy on the faces of these people that you're capturing yeah those are the pictures that i published john but uh, there are all kinds of expressions out there but a little background on that is uh, i told you that i uh, you know worked in new york and and i sold my company and I was a young man, didn't know what to do with myself, but I'd always had a interest in photography. So uh, one of my friends in New York City said, uh, Frank, you know, the high school around the corner here, they're looking for, they need a photographer in the dance department. Why don't you go over there and talk to them? So I did, and it changed my life. I became a dance photographer at the high school for the performing arts in New York City. The Fame School, it's called LaGuardia High School. They uh, love to brag that it's harder to get into LaGuardia than those Ivy League schools. It, it attracts talent from all across the city. And I became a dance photographer and I had a lot to learn about, you know, shooting uh, dance and ballet and kids in the classroom. Uh, shortly after that, just a year or two later, I'm doing the same thing at University of California in Irvine with Donald McHale, a famous uh, dancer, choreographer, and then uh, you know, head of the dance department, artistic director, the dance department. So I'm a bi-coastal dance photographer. And uh, what a thrill that is. And uh, it was all as a volunteer, and I was giving the kids, part of, part of my mission was seniors needed headshots for their portfolios. Oh, uh, yeah. And as soon as I get done with that, they need ballet, you know, poses for their college applications. The photos out on State Street, again, you know, there's, there's just so much uh, joy that's being captured there, and it's so powerful. Talk a little bit about, you know, sort of the response that you're getting locally as well as uh, around the world. Uh, one thing I would say is it's just, I suppose, a gift is I've often gotten a nice reaction. That's the key to being a good photographer, you know, landscape photographers, it doesn't matter, but you know, you're shooting people. I've often gotten a nice reaction from people. And uh, that's certainly true on the street and... Uh, and then, of course, like I've done before, I've combined that with, uh, you know, the very best equipment that I can walk out onto the street with. And I'm able to capture these images. And that's where my background in shooting dance, you know, it's motion. 
And although I'm freezing the action, I know, uh, you know, what I want to accomplish. These are more like portraits, bicycle portraits is the way I kind of distinguish them. I'm really, you know, keyed on the, you know, who's the individual. So a lot of the shots are just from the handlebars up and I've gotten a great reaction. Just like at the high school for the performing arts in New York City, you know, high school age, there's a high school component here in Santa Barbara and they're out riding their bikes every night. And just like the kids at LaGuardia Dance, they love their picture being posted on Instagram. So I've got a lot of uh, young people that I'm meeting, uh, which is the people of all ages. Uh, yesterday, uh, I met a man, I'd seen him, I tell him, I see you riding your bike every day, Roger. He told me he uh, uh, worked at the high school here in Santa Barbara for 40 years. So his first question is, how do I know you? He thought I might have been one of his students, but no. I knew him because I took his photo one day and uh, put it on Instagram and quickly people are identifying him. So, uh, and his perspective matched my own. He told me he's never seen so many people on bicycles in Santa Barbara as there are today because of the city closing the street, State Street to cars. So that's what's been going on, John. I, I, I am fortunate that I'm lazy, like so many of us, I'm lazy. I turn on the camera, walk out the door and, um, in the action, I'm right there. I don't have to get in the car or ride my bike anywhere yeah. to uh, be a part of this. And it's like stepping into a river, the step out on State Street and you got people, uh, you know, uh, going by you left and right. Yeah, yeah. What tugs at the heartstrings are some of the pictures of the young children, uh, little boys, little girls. One mother brought her she four-year-old out one e early evening and she's all dressed up with a beautiful pink tutu and a polka dot top and then you have to look more closely to see rainbow colored shoes and anyway uh photos like that you know populate the site and uh, really uh, the community is really responding so a, a reoccurring theme of the podcast of the active towns podcast has been uh the response that communities have had uh across the country and around the world to a, a devastating you know pandemic and uh the fact that in many places people are are rediscovering their neighborhoods and having a shift, a, ment a paradigm shift in terms of their relationship with their street. And it, it sounds like that's a little bit of what's happening with State Street. Exactly. Right sure. Yeah, it's just like the city drank a magic potion. And uh, people are out there just like, you know, we all learn. We go to conferences like you started this interview, John, talking about you know, conferences, national conferences we've both been to. Uh, we talk about that. Some cities are fortunate to have pioneered in this area. And, you know, it, it's trite, but if you build it, people will come. And, you know, the, one of the corollaries is that uh, they often say women are indicator species, right? You see women out there, women with their children, it's mom who decides if the infrastructure you just created is safe enough for the family. And so it's particularly heartwarming to uh, see the uh, women and children, uh, dads too, out there. I call it, I title some of my uh, photos, Adventures with Dad. You see little toddlers on the bike with dad going for a ride. Those, you know, that's a testament to what the city has created here in Santa Barbara. It's wonderful. Yeah, and I think that uh, the the fact that you started off this conversation talking about the economic rebound and the vitality and the vibrancy that took place once the street was transformed and there was space uh, available to be able to pivot during a difficult, challenging time reinforces the concept that uh, streets are for people. 
And when we create people oriented places, some really cool, amazing, magical, as you use uh, the term, you know, things can happen. And that's just really, really encouraging. So don't be afraid of change, I guess, is one of the uh, things to take away from this. Even devastating change, like uh, the economic devastation that's happening as a result of COVID, you know, you have these side effects that occur where people are compelled to look at alternatives. And, And in this case, it's alternatives to how we organize and structure the downtown core. And it's, uh, you know, at first people were nervous. Is the city going to keep State Street closed? Well, now, uh, as I like to say, it's hard to get the genie back in the bottle. Uh, The economic, you know, opportunity that's occurring here, uh, the city's never going to be able to take that away and say, okay, everybody off the sidewalks, off the street, you know, to let cars just, you know, ride down there and they, never could park. It was all red curb both ways. So anyway, that is, uh, uh, you know, I think guarantees the success here. There's one aspect that I haven't mentioned, John, about my taking the photos there uh, out on State Street is um, the bicycle documentarian part of this is I've always thought that eventually bicycles will be restricted on State Street. And I would tell my friends who would be horrified at the thought, I'd say, well, the city will only do that at the point when it becomes an economic, you know, miracle, so successful. And we have examples like Santa Monica's Third Street Promenade is, uh, you know, so packed with people and diners and jugglers and musicians and everything else you can think of that uh, bicycles have to be walked through the promenade. So that could, uh, so part of my photography motivations are to capture this moment uh, just in case it's uh, short lived. Yeah, yeah. And we can think of, you know, a handful of pedestrianized main streets, Pearl Street, obviously, in Boulder, Colorado would be another, where uh, in that pedestrianized zone, uh, bikes are not allowed, uh, you know, to be ridden, you can obviously walk your bike through to your your destination. Um, But yeah, point well taken. You said something there that I think is very, very um, important. And we should just dive into a little bit and that was don't be afraid of change because yes. one of the biggest challenges that we have is we you know try to create more people oriented places is that there's a little bit of an upsetting of the status quo the way things yes. have quote unquote always been and of course it's not true it, it hasn't always been that motor vehicles have dominated our downtown areas Motor vehicles are really a relatively new construct in the history of man and time. 100 years. That's there you all. go. Only yeah. 100 years. But talk a little bit about that, because one of the biggest challenges that many cities have in dealing with uh, transforming their environments into more uh, healthy, more vibrant places, people oriented places, if you will, is that resistance to change. Yeah, and uh, bicycle advocates everywhere know what we're talking about, John, right? Is you're, as you upset the apple cart, you're pitting, you know, uh, safer streets for cyclists and what might be added economic advantage versus, you know, the status quo. And, you know, the merchants in Santa Barbara were the dragging their feet. Right. That, that was the problem. They create these committees to revitalize uh, State Street because like every downtown area, you know, the fact e-commerce, people like Amazon are hurting the little shops in on State Street. Uh, too many of our shops, uh, retail has been in support of, uh, you know, the tourism community. And I think we all know that we're told today, we're instructed by architects, city planners to build your downtowns for the residents if you want a long-term sustainable environment. 
But our, you know, uh, we weren't doing that. We were chasing, you know, trying to sell T-shirts to tourists, and uh, that wasn't having the economic effect that we wanted. But then the city would create these, or the business district, these um, revitalizing, you know, State Street. But then they'd appoint people to these committees who, you know, would just come right out and tell us that they had to have the cars on State Street driving by, even though they couldn't stop. Uh, they had to have that kind of visibility. And they were patting us on the head, telling us that things like the Third Street Promenade and Pearl Street and Boulder are the exceptions and not the rule. So we, and, and then you look at our elected officials. They, of course, part of the game in American politics is, you know, uh, you want to run for city council or some other position here, you're going to need financial contributions. Bicyclists really don't contribute to that. So we're disenfranchised, whereas the local businesses are the core of your uh, political support in the community if you're a city council member. And if you want to run for office or run for mayor, you're going to go ask these people. So we had a lot of friction there with our elected officials, no different from any other city that I know of in Southern California anyway. So uh, anyway, uh, don't be afraid of change. It broke that log jam where the merchant class was dictating how we use State Street. They were the experts. And of course, you know, uh, They'd never been, none of them had ever been to the National Bike Summit in Washington, D.C. to learn of how other cities are doing this. So they're flying by the seat of their pants. And too many of our city council members just kind of like nodding their heads. And nobody wants to see, you know, pitchforks and torches at the next city council meeting. So that kind of describes the contest that we were in. So we needed help and COVID brought that. Yeah. And shuffled the deck. Yeah, I mean, and it, it was just one of those things that, you know, happens and it happens globally across the country, around the world. And it reinforces another thing that uh, we had been developing, especially over the last five years, and that is quick action, you know, tactical urbanism, you know, pop up infrastructure, things that you can do very, very quickly, lighter, quicker, cheaper, and then give people the opportunity to feel it see it, experience it, which is brings us right back to the smiling faces and the people who are out there on the bikes on State Street experiencing it. And, and it allows for people to deal with that resistance to change and have a little bit of a paradigm shift. So it's it's absolutely beautiful how, how that happens. If you can touch it, wow. if you can feel it, it makes it more real for you. So, I hope that Santa Barbara you know, uh, is recognized as an example for, you know, what's happening here could happen in your city if you'll take the risk and, uh, you know, take your downtown core and put up some temporary barricades and keep the cars out and uh, see what happens. You know, you'll be surprised at... Uh, the economic impact, the number of bicyclists. Yeah, yeah. And and to be clear, I mean, every city and every downtown is going to be slightly different. You had a situation where State Street was already a zone that was a flow through zone. There wasn't parking, you know, on that particular Main Street area. So it, there's a little bit of copy and paste, but there's also a little bit of customization. Make it work. It doesn't have to necessarily all be a car free zone. It could be an ultra low speed sort of Dutch approach of a shared street environment where the the speeds are dramatically reduced to you know six seven ten miles per hour uh type of situation so understand that uh, take no yeah. prisoners though you bicycle yeah. advocates listening out there go to city hall bang your shoe on the podium and take no prisoners is uh you know we often use the example of is it safe for an eight-year-old that's kind of one of the cardinal rules right john is uh if the city's uh if the street's not safe for an eight-year-old you haven't really accomplished your mission so uh yeah sure start on some side streets if you want to prove the concept yeah. santa barbara 
took out nine city blocks. Now they've extended it uh, on a side street here uh, to reach kind of like the restaurant row uh, right. because it's such a, you know, a windfall, economic windfall. So yeah, it's a yeah. great time to be a bicyclist in Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned the eight-year-old, and you know the 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 tagline there uh, that Gil Peñalosa started years ago was eight to eighty. Uh, I'm now using the the tagline uh, much more uh, uh, frequently of all ages and abilities, and and that really you know sort of encompasses the fact and what you're documenting out there in th through photography is that you're seeing all ages out there flocking to the area. Toddlers yeah, just, in yeah. some cases, a mom uh, helping her toddler step off the curb and he's got a little uh, toy car that he can sit inside of and he's going with pedals and he can ride that on State Street. If that doesn't, you know, hit you right here, I don't know what it is, you know, that and it's the mother again making the decision that it's safe enough to let her toddler that's what started me on state street i've got there's a a family in my condo building here with a seven-year-old and he's a uh, you know uh, seven years old maybe it's hard for some of you to remember what it's like to ride a bike at seven uh, you know uh, it's uh, he's still learning and i captured an image of the mother uh head down towards his level he's sitting on the bike and you can't hear, of course, what she's saying. You can't see her expression, but you can see his. Yeah, beautiful. For the listeners who are out there and the viewers as well, uh, who are motivated by our conversation today, what advice do you have for them to be able to make a difference in their community? Well, of course, first thing is get involved, right? At any level, um, you know, I, I said, before I've been at this for 10 years, you're going to, it's going to take you. I would tell my bicycle advocate friends in Orange County, you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life. So don't let that scare you though. At the same time, you're going to make steady progress. And uh, at no time in the past, like right now, is the awareness of the environment and uh, here in California, the impact from fossil fuels and our wildfires, People want to listen to your point of view. You've got the economic incentive, like we've talked about over and over again. Businesses in your downtown core need something different to remain viable. So get involved, uh, read, listen to podcasts like John's here, and uh, go to a regional or a national conference where you'll meet other like-minded people. For, for one, you're going to come away from the experience like that feeling uh, not quite so alone. And you'll learn of other people's successes, and that will encourage you to work towards your own. So uh, well, there's a path there and yeah. uh, start it. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and also follow your work and uh, give us that uh, Instagram uh, identification again. It's biking, breathing on Instagram, biking, breathing. Fantastic. Uh, a lot of fun images there. Come by and leave a comment. Yes, absolutely. Frank, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you here today. Thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Thank you, John. Thank you also very much for tuning into this episode. I certainly hope you've enjoyed the conversation with Frank Peters. Please be sure to follow his work on Instagram. Again, his handle is biking, breathing. I've included this and several other helpful and relevant links in the show notes and on this episode's landing page at activetowns.org. A quick reminder before we part ways, please don't hesitate to drop me a line if you have any feedback, suggestions, or questions. My email is john, that's J-O-H-N, at activetowns, that's plural, dot O-R-G. It's always wonderful to hear from y'all. And if I may ask for one final favor, please help me grow our audience and this movement to create a culture of activity by telling a friend or two about the Active Towns podcast. Thank you. Well, that's all for now. So until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. Cheers.